The second reason is just to give you a few tips and pointers about livestock guardian dogs. We have three livestock guardian dogs. The most common predator in our area and the predator we've had the most problem with actually have been foxes with our chickens and stray dogs with our chickens. And I don't doubt that if I didn't have my livestock guardian dogs living with my goats because they don't live with the chickens, that we probably would have had goat losses by now, either from coyotes, because we do have coyotes in the area, or from stray dogs. Stray dogs will decimate your herds as well and your flocks because while predators have this instinct to kill for food and to for survival and stray dogs that are domesticated they're just killing for sport and that may sound harsh but it's true and i've seen them do it the stray dogs have gotten into our chicken coop and they can break into rabbit hutches they've done that here they've broken into rabbit hutches at friends properties well built like not even cheap rabbit hutches but well built sturdy ones they just kill them and leave them because they don't have any need to eat them but they still have the prey drive i think a livestock guardian dog is an excellent investment I think having two is your best bet because they do work better in pairs or groups, especially if you're in an area where you have large predators like mountain lions or wolves, then you need several, um, or bears, then you need several livestock guardian dogs to really make any kind of a difference. If you have a large group of coyotes or even multiple stray dogs that are wandering around together, what will happen if you only have one livestock guardian dog is Let's say this is the herd, this is your guardian dog, here are the predators over here. Well, your guardian dog goes to fight with the predators and some of the other predators break away from the group and come get your herd because um, one dog is not gonna be able to combat that. So pairs or groups is best because they're gonna be able to best protect the herd that way. Personally, I prefer Great Pyrenees. So I have two Great Pyrenees and I have a Great Pyrenees Anatolian mix. And the Anatolian cross is the one who is a little bit more aggressive. And if you understand these breeds, then you understand that that's just how those breeds are. I've um, talked to other people who have owned them as well, and Anatolians are a more aggressive breed than Great Pyrenees. Uh, one way to describe it is that Great Pyrenees will handle a threat and if they can, they'll just like escort it out like, sorry, sir, you're not welcome here. And they'll escort it out in a way. And then they're just like, okay, cool. And they'll come back. Um, they only take it as far as they need to basically. Anatolians on the other hand are much more likely to handle a threat in a lethal manner. So they won't just, you know, kindly escort it out of the territory. They're much more likely to actually take things seriously to a physical level of eliminating the threat altogether. That's gonna vary between how severe the threat is and what type of animal it is and individuals as well because you know we can say these blanket statements about breeds as generalities but it's not always gonna be 100% accurate for each individual. But that just is kind of a picture of how they can differ. And part of that is the environments that they were in. When you're talking about livestock guardian dogs, you're talking about dogs that have been bred for centuries to live and work with herds and protect them from threats. And historically, that often meant that they were not living in fences with close interaction with people. They were wandering, you know, the mountainside in various areas that these breeds have been developed because they come from several different places and they wandered with the herd. So that meant that they were responsible basically to take care of themselves. So livestock guardian dogs are very resourceful. They're very, very smart. If there's a way out of your fence, they will find it. They climb, they dig, they find holes. They do like to roam because again, they come from an environment where they were for years and years before we started really fencing in livestock as much as we do. They were just roaming acres and acres of countryside with the herds, just living with the flock. And they're, they're very intelligent. They're very stubborn. They're very self-reliant dogs. And also with that, with this protective nature and how they've been developed, especially certain breeds, they can be aggressive in some ways. Especially, like, like I said, Anatolians are more likely to be aggressive than Pyrenees. 
So Anatolians are very protective of their food. And again, when you think about the environment that they were developed in, that makes sense. All of these traits that they have that can sometimes be challenging for humans, it makes them great at their job. It developed a survival instinct when they were living sufficiently with their herds. And it can also be a little bit challenging though because it can be challenging to keep them in your fences and it can be challenging in terms of if you do have food aggression type if issues then it's just kind of an extra step. To me, it's entirely worth it to take the extra steps to have a good guardian dog. And all of my dogs have proven themselves to be good guardians. You know, there is a period when they go through their puppyhood that they can be challenging. And that's something else to look out for as well because they don't go from being a puppy to just being like this wonderful, excellent dog. There, there is a stage when they need a little more guidance and it's best if they can get that guidance from an older guardian dog. They're learning from what the other dog is, is doing. That's the best case scenario. But there, you know, there will be challenges if you get livestock guardian dogs. My personal advice would be if you're new to livestock guardian dogs and depending on how severe your predator threat is, I would suggest starting out with Pyrenees or a high percentage Pyrenees cross because they're gonna be a little bit more mellow and a little bit easier for the new first time guardian owner. Other important things, be aware of what whatever breed you get, be aware of their quirks and some of their challenges, you know, read about it, talk to other people. Before I got an Anatolian mix, again, I kind of expected it to be a slightly more challenging, slightly more aggressive type of dog because, you know, I've talked to other people, like I said, people who have had ears bitten off of dogs, they're not dogs, bitten off of their goats from the Anatolians. And I spoke with someone who owns Anatolians who's had to completely separate their Anatolians on like a daily 100% they no longer live together basis and she had male Anatolians and that may be affecting it because my Anatolian cross first of all she is crossed with Pyrenees but she it gets along with the dogs fine it's just at feeding time so we haven't had to keep her completely separate but this other person I know who had all male Anatolians she has to keep hers completely separate because they fight if she doesn't. So these are things that you should be aware of. Um, and Anatolians and Pyrenees are not the only guardian breeds. They're probably the most common. They're the ones at least I see the most that are easiest to find. But just be aware of those kind of things. Be sure that if you're expecting your dog to protect your goats or your sheep or whatever they're living with that you're buying guardian breeds, first of all, because they have years and years and years of guarding instinct bred into them down the line. And if you have been around different types of dogs, you'll see that in action. So dogs who are herding dogs or hunting dogs or pointers or setters, they from puppyhood, they automatically have that instinct. It's the same way with the livestock guardians. If you're trying to put some other kind of breed in there with your goats or whatever, um, animal and expecting them to guard them, you are not gonna get the results you want and you may even end up with dead livestock because that instinct is not there. Livestock guardian breeds and mixes between two or more livestock guardian breeds, not like a livestock guardian breed mixed with a herding breed, but a livestock guardian breed mixed with a livestock guardian breed, those are the only ones you want in your herds and in your flocks. Be sure that you're purchasing your puppy or your mature dog, you're gonna be hard pressed to find a mature guardian dog though, at least one that doesn't have some severe vices because I tell you when people have a good guardian dog, they're not gonna be selling it, okay? Unless they're getting out of farming or something and you get lucky. But most of the time you're only gonna find puppies. You wanna be sure that those are coming from working homes because again, even in short generations, that instinct can quickly start to fade away and it's also really important that they're seeing that action in action from puppyhood and watching their parents guard and seeing what they do. You also want to be sure that they are not only from a working home but that they're staying with their parents or their mother for a long enough period of time, ideally at least 12 weeks because during those early puppy years they're really learning a lot. They should be living with livestock. 
They should be from the time that they are puppies living in an environment with livestock because that young age is when they're gonna learn respect for the livestock and when they're gonna learn to recognize the livestock as part of their pack. And then they should be spending that age where they're really developing and learning. They should be learning from their, their dam as she is guarding the herd. They're watching and she's teaching them how to guard. And ideally, if you can, um, if you do have a mature guardian dog already and you're like adding another or whatever, it's even better if they can continue to live with a mature guardian dog up until they're adults and they are past the puppy stage, which is gonna be, for most breeds, about two years old. Now, when we first started out, we didn't have any mature guardian dogs, so we brought home a puppy. She was uh, 12 weeks old, so she had spent a lot of time with other mature breed um, dogs. And we did what her breeder told us to do, which was to leave her with the most dominant goats that we had, which we did, and to not interact too much. And that's another thing that's gonna be hard to do because you have this cute fluffy little puppy and you wanna play with it, you wanna cuddle it and give it kisses and all that jazz. But they need to learn that they are to be bonded with the goats. If you spend too much time with them, especially at a young age, they will bond to you instead, or at least there is a potential that they will bond to you. And again, this is something I've seen happen to other people where they spent, they had a guardian dog that was just too bonded to people. And I even talked to someone many, many years ago who had a situation like that where the dog would not stay with the livestock. It kept escaping and coming up to the house to be with the people. And that is not what you want to happen either. So during those early months, I would say up until about six months old, you really want contact to be minimal, you know, just at, just as is necessary for supervision and feeding and things like that, but not spending a ton of time bonding with the dog because you don't want it to bond with you. Now my livestock guardian dogs are all sweet. Mello, the first one that we ever got, um, she'll come up and she'll hug me and you know they always want to be petted and stuff like that when we're down there, but they know that they belong with their goats. They are not bonded to people. They like me, they like people, they're very sweet dogs, but there's a difference there between um, you know, being bonded to and associating people as their pack versus associating the other livestock guardian dogs in the livestock. So that's just some advice. I know I probably rambled and maybe took a few too many bunny trails, but I highly, highly recommend livestock guardian dogs. Just be sure that you are researching and understand what you're getting into and understand how they work and what to expect from them. Last thing that I'll mention is that you shouldn't expect your guardian dogs to be able to guard chickens or small animals because again, that's not what they were developed for. It works out perfectly for some people. There are cases where livestock guardian dogs do live successfully with poultry, but there are also a lot of cases where they end up eating the chickens. Thanks for watching. I'm sorry, I know this was kind of long. You can follow me on Facebook, Instagram, and Twitter at Tiramar Farms, all those places. And subscribe down below, and I'll see you next time.